there. Does everyone at least have their, their estimates figured out? Yes. Almost. Yes. Okay. 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 Well, okay, so in showing you all exactly how this works out, I'm going to do an actual demonstration with water. And as I go through, I will better explain to you guys what the types of water are. Um, because I just kind of glanced over that because I figured you guys already knew saltwater glaciers, groundwater, surface water. But we're not all science teachers. And so I'll explain that as we go through. So if we remember our globe from yesterday. 75% of the planet covered in water. Today. So we're going to say that this right here is all the water in the entire world. All the water that we have on the planet. Does that include water vapor? Yes. <laughs> it includes every form of water. So salt water, glaciers, groundwater, surface fresh water, water vapor, precipitation. That's everything that we have in the whole world right there. This is 1,000 milliliters. Okay. So let's see how big of a mess I can make here. I'm going to start by taking 30 milliliters of this. Oh, yeah, I'm making a mess already. Plan B. Yeah, let me top this off. Excuse me, ladies. All right, so we're learning. Maybe the jar is not the best way to go. <laughs> you need more coffee. Yeah, yeah, a lot of coffee. <laughs> I drink tea. <laughs> Maybe you need more coffee. Okay. <laughs> so that's 30 milliliters right there. Uh, so what I have there, this is all of Earth's fresh water right here. So this is the entire planet's supply of salt water. We can't really use this without some expensive desalination. So we're going to just put that back over there. So now with this 30 milliliters here, 3% of the Earth's total, that would, oh, this would indicate though on your bar chart that salt water should have taken up, actually if you want to get really exact, it should have taken up 97.2% of your chart. So if you want to go ahead and draw a line and fill in your actual, that was 97.2%. So now, this 30 milliliters, we're going to split up into three different parts. So next, we're going to show you what is actually locked up in ice caps and glaciers, basically frozen water. So I'm going to take six milliliters of this. Okay, so there's our glaciers and ice caps out of our frozen water. Oh, oh wait, I did this backwards. Hang on, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm going to keep this six milliliters aside. I mean, this is what's locked up in glaciers is our 24 milliliters. All right, so here's our glaciers. And did you have a percentage for that, like you have the 97.2 for the salt? So if we're looking at 24 milliliters, then they, they don't actually give me a percentage for that. 
So, so then this six milliliters that I have right here, this is our groundwater and our surface fresh water. Oh, it does say right here, 2% of the Earth's water is uh, frozen on those ice caps. And then our, un our groundwater is 0.6%. So then our surface fresh water that is available for use that is not polluted these are, this is what we use for agriculture. We use it for drinking, bathing, swimming, washing the car, flushing the toilet. This is how much water we have for that. Oh, Ding. oh come on. There's that? more than that going into the intake as we speak, right? I'm <laughs> <laughs> a smart fellow, I know. That. Um, and you guys can look down in there and you can see it. It's just, it's just one little drop. That's all. That's all there is. One. Wow. It's just the tiniest oh, no. little easy drop. Would you ladies want to see it? Yes, please. So according to my calculations, that's 1.2%. Is that what you guys got? Oh, that's no, no, no. That's point zero 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 three percent Three zeros and then a three. I think mm. it's four zeros. Don't work out. Something's not right. Yep. Because I didn't give you the percentage for. Uh, so there's ninety-seven point two, and then it's two percent is glaciers. Mm-hmm. Point six. Point six percent is groundwater. So there's one point two left. Well, it's already ninety-nine point six. Don't forget there's there's point six percent in your ground. And it's point zero 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 three. That's what's left. And you said that's for agriculture, showers, laundry, four. survival, water, water. Water. <laughs> life, all of the basics, and just the basics. Yes. 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 That surface fresh water that is not polluted and otherwise used. So that. She's like no. There's other water there. It's just that the point zero 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 three percent is the only usable out of the surface. Yes, because we still have this. This water exists, but it's all locked up in glaciers and underground. And then this is all salt water. But that's all. Of this. That's that drop. That's all we have. So, so then you would compare that to what the kids have done on their chart? Yes, yeah, so now kind of they, they should ha you should have two different charts. And you can see, uh, when I did this last year at the workshop, I, I participated as I've done the activity before. And I thought it was pretty smart. There was a huge discrepancy in what I thought and what there actually was. Um, so you guys see how if you did this with the kids. It's almost a little bit of a mind blower, uh, especially around here, to really help them understand just how little water we have access to. And there's other ways to do that too, isn't there? Marianne, didn't you say there was a, you can do an apple, cut well, up an apple? That shows the amount of usable land for agriculture and, and but then if you actually add into the equation, it's, similar. it's not equally distributed you know, everywhere on the planet. And mm -hmm. ironically, with uh, climatic changes, a lot of times the places we need it most, we don't have it like for agricultural exactly. purposes that even just you know, suck a little bit more of that away. Yeah. Any other comments, concerns? Yeah, what's the latest thing with the science and uh, desalid Salinization. Mm -hmm. How are we on that world of technology? Um, we're putting it in fracking. How about we do something about <laughs> a little more water? Um, as far as I understand it, 
desalinization is just still really, really, really expensive, but it's getting to the point where some countries are just they're having to seriously consider it. Saudi Arabia uses it almost completely. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just reverse osmosis. Is all yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There has to be technology out there, and it has to be getting there. And it's just like solar power, it's becoming a lot more accessible and a lot less around spending. So it's going to be utilized a lot more once it's made less. And it's all fun, but they don't have expenses for that. So, but, yes. I like how it leads right into a conversation about conservation as well. Exactly. It's the perfect segue for organic kids. Like, well, so this is clearly a problem. We can see what the problem is with not very much water. <laughs> so. Well, and like, you weren't even seeing, I mean, I was back east at my parents' house and I was taking her class. We got two and a half inches of rain in one day. And that was one day within many days of rain. And there was flash flooding. And then there was too much water. You can't mow the lawn because it's soggy. But it's growing like crazy. So. Yeah, why, why don't we have that water here? It's just not There's a really good article. There's an article about changing rains in National Geographic. I wish I brought it. I don't remember what the date was. I think it was 2011. But if you, I bet if you just went to their site and the changing rains, it talks about how it's raining more in the wetter places. And it's now raining even less in the drier places. I was going to ask her a question, stuff like that, just for information. Uh, some of the technology is already out there. It, it depends on when the uh, politicians and powers to be that have the money are going to decide to start breaking free and making this. For instance, we have the four or five hundred fifty gallon a minute reverse osmosis units out there that ran like a charm and the outside two thousand gallons a minute, which is probably more than those springs use. And most of the day, that's about three and a half million gallons a day. We also have some uh, work on called brine concentrators that uh, make 550 gallons a minute of super triple distilled water, and we actually run that through another demineralizer to uh, further clarify. So the technology is the stuff in there, but the uh, brine concentrators I'm talking about, if you, you've done that where you have a glass cylinder and you heat it up on one side and cools it on the other side. We'll picture that being uh, eight stories tall, solid stainless steel with titanium jacket for your heating steam. And it makes 550 gallons a minute. We have five of them. You see, we, we you refresh my memory. Uh, San Juan Generating Station. Okay. Generating Station. So we there. have to have super, we take the triple distilled water, foot run through the mineralizer and everything else before it's, uh, the purity is, is uh, uh, clear enough to be able to run through the turbines. Any little thing. Matter of fact, we even have to add hydrogen and everything else as a scavenger to clear up the oxygen and stuff going through the turn. Oh, wow. Yeah, we would just have to throw that in there. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, I, I think the limiting factor in the whole desalinization question becomes the cost effectiveness because we can't, we can't really expect our government to subsidize and create water desalinization plants. It has to be in the free enterprise system, it has to be developed through some sort of commerce, and somebody's got to be able to do that and make a profit. I mean, that's the way our world works. So until we get to that point, I don't think we're going to have huge desalinization projects. We're going to have to really need the water and be willing to pay for it. You know, over in Dubai, they, they run strictly on desalinization. Right. They go right out of the ocean and run through everything right. else. They don't have much choice, so maybe that's what it'll come down to. I don't know. More debates? Oh, another question? I've also done the same thing, only started with a five gallon bucket. And I don't fill it with water. I just have my two cups and bring uh -huh. out two cups and that's your fresh water. And then you go down to one cup is in the glaciers and then uh, you end up with a teaspoon. So it's the same deal. But if you don't have a, well, we all will now, but if you yes. didn't have the, the, the flask, and when you're traveling, it's a little bit easier to do the, the cups and the teaspoons. And if you do, if you have a metal container, I don't know if you guys heard it over the air blowing, but it does make a little ding when you drop it in the bucket to kind of send a message home a little more. The other thing that I find that they, they're confused about a lot of times, like students, is the 
concept of it being like a closed system, which also adds to the equation where that drop of water is constantly being recycled and reused ultimately. Yeah. Good segue, because isn't that our next activity? Isn't that where we're heading? Our next yes. activity is all about the water cycle. 